Hello everyone, today I have something different, more different than the usual and it's in my hand and it's quite tiny. Check this out. It's a tiny board, computer, I don't know, I'm, I'm quite sure you guys know about it more than me. But since I recently found it, uh, it's something new that I haven't tried, used or anything like that. What got me interested in it, it was its compact size and super tiny screen. I'm sure that there are people out there doing amazing things with these, but since my knowledge is so limited, I decided to try something simple and something fun, I guess. So I decided to make the smallest handheld I can possibly make. So without further ado, I'll just go into it. Like I said, my knowledge is quite limited in all this, so I went on GitHub and I found exactly what I needed. Uh, obviously, a smarter guy than me already made exactly what I need. He made a game for this super tiny thing. He did all the necessary guides and steps that what you need to do, so he made my task quite easy. So, all credits to the guy and I'll leave link in the description if you want to do a similar project to this. Now let's grab the files and get it installed on my board. Uh, as you can see the code is quite simple but I noticed that I have to do a few changes. I'm sure I'm not using the correct terms but I had to do a few changes here. I had to change the ports on the screen I guess and I also had to change the resolution uh, so that the game can fit the tiny screen. Also, I had to adjust the text that appears in the game to match, again, the screen. Here, again, I had to change the screen resolution so that the game could be displayed correctly. But even when I did that, the game was successfully installed on the board. However, the screen resolution wasn't right. So I discovered that I had to edit the um, file named display configuration to match the screen size and get the correct picture on it. When I finally got the game working uh, with the correct screen size, I had to just test it to see if everything is running as expected. And now I can just move to the next step, which is actually harder. Since I still don't own a 3D printer, I have to make everything on my own. This came in the box with the board, but I don't think it's something I can use because I don't see how it will help me build a shell for my tiny game. However, on first look, what I see is that the board has five volts it has ground and 3 volts, which means I can use the 3 volt uh, pen to connect the battery. Also, as the board doesn't sit flat on the ground, I need to use something to maybe keep it separated from the battery. And this is the only battery I have that can, I guess, work for this project, but it was quite fat. Then I remembered I got this leftover battery from a failed iPod repair and I think this will be a perfect match. And here is why. This battery is so thin and it's quite thinner compared to the other battery I have. So I think I'll use it for my project now. And since it can push 3 volts, I can safely assume that I can connect it. Yeah, and it works. So we have a battery, we have a board. Now I need to figure out the rest of the things. I don't want the board to sit on top of the battery. I, I want to make some space between them. That way I can pull out the battery if I need to replace it or charge it. I need something to keep it separate, just like that. After some digging in my desk, I found this. And I think that gray piece will do just fine. All I need to do is cut it in half and it will be the perfect piece to keep the battery and the board separated. I just need to remove these first and split it in half with the saw. Since I didn't want to cut my desk, I decided to not go all the way and I'll just 
have to file down the rough edges. And after some sanding on both parts, I think they look just fine. This is what I meant for space. Now there is some room for the battery. And when I place protective top like this cutout of paper, uh, it won't touch the board. Also, this tiny switch will connect the battery and the board. I already cut it out those two pieces. One will be the top and one will be the bottom, just like that. Now I'll mark the pieces I need to cut out. With the help of my grinding pan, I'll just cut out the port. It will still need some sanding, but I think the cutout looks good. Let me just check how it sits on top of the board. Yeah, it's perfect. But please don't be like me. There is an easy way to do all this, and that's the sponsor of this video. Additional to the already great services provided by PCBWay, they have a store where you can get everything your project might need. You can even get tools, you can get parts, you can get exactly what you need from a single place. Maybe your project needs a specific sized screen. Go to pcbway.com and you will find everything you need. Actually, by saying this, I think I see what I might get for my next project. So don't waste more time. Just go to pcbway.com and turn your idea into a great and amazing project. Thank you PCBWay for making this video possible. Now, as you can see, I've made room for buttons and I decided to file down some plastic and cut out the buttons from it, just like that. I just need to make sure that they can't pass through all the way. I will just solder this tiny piece of cable on the on off switch and it seems I have to file down this part. Some more cutting and some more filing and the project is starting to get shape and now after all this some more soldering is needed. With that done I have to build up the shell. I'll just super glue everything and I hope I won't have to disassemble it. Now with enough room I can fit the on off switch on the side. Luckily the pieces I'm using have some holes in them and I can fit the cables so they don't get in the way. Placing the board on top of everything and soldering the wires. As you can see the switch works and the board turns on. Wiping out the fingerprints and I can place the buttons in the top part of the shell. Some super glue and this should be ready. I know it looks rough and it has some sharp edges. I'm sure that anyone would have done this in a different way, but for now, I think I'll just keep it like that. Side note, I like how clicky the buttons are. With that said, I think I'm done building the smallest handheld I ever had. I think it looks cool the way it is, partially see-through. I can see the battery, I can see the board on top. And what's more amazing, it actually works. Uh, for some part of it, I thought I'll just burn the board. And yeah, if you're wondering, I'm really bad at games. Um, I'll crash land this a zillion times. But even though I'm bad at the game, I think it will look cool as a keychain. But minutes before me finishing the video, I got the mail. And I kind of think I lied that this is the smallest handheld I could ever make. Because in the mail, I got smaller board than this one. I'm actually amazed that there is something smaller than the board I already had. And this one looks to be smaller because the buttons are on the back. I'm not sure the rest of it, but yeah. I'll just pretend that I never received this mail. For those that will say I didn't write the code for the game, I'll show you this. Thanks for watching and please subscribe.